Big Cat was in the building. I don't know for what uh, he keeps a secret. He's a secret keeper. As uh, he was at House Hall yesterday, he got into places of the building that uh, I cannot get to, that I don't even think Waddle can get to. That so does, I, does I, not surprise me. So I, I did not see him in person, though you said you saw him in person later. The PFT came downstairs and they said hello. They came hello. down here and was 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 you, he made the effort to come down and say hi to us. Where was I? Yeah. Uh, you were, you were prancing around. You were prancing yeah. around in your little bl- uh, blue shirt. What yeah. do you mean in my little blue shirt? It was a skin tight shirt. <laughs> I am fat. You got to size up. You're not. You're not. The, what are you wearing these days? Medium. You know, it's a. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a large. I, I feel I, like you've been toying with medium, and you're not a medium guy. I am. You are right. I am not a medium guy, but this is a large. Olive Waddle. Even uh, Waddle, check the uh, check the sizing there. It Listen, says as, as U12L. Someone... <laughs> yeah. U12L. It's a Y. As, y12. As, as someone who's had to go up and down the scale on the shirts many times, you just gotta you gotta admit it. Sometimes, like I've gone from a large to an XL to a double XL, back down to an XL, back to an X double XL. It just it happens. You got to just be honest with yourself. It's a little too tight. This is this is the summer that I've I've packed them on. I have um, there is no shame, and I'm just at this point I am not even worrying about it. Yesterday I was at the Green Day Smashing Pumpkins show, and I just I I, I I didn't even hesitate, and I took one of the one of the pizzas right back to my seat. From from the concession will, okay. stands and just like it. I drank and did I you ate. sit down and eat it or did you eat it standing up? I ate it standing up. Okay. While while yeah, while uh, singing with the so spitting pizza toppings all over people around you. It was yeah. a cheese though. Okay. I um, love it. So wait, you missed Hard Knocks? Uh no, I watched it last night when I got home. Got it. Now I got a question for you, Waddle. Were oh, you yeah. uh one of the one of the people like myself? who still has cable, who's been, who's been told time and time again that we're old and we're so stupid for having cable, and then last night was our <laughs> night because I all was just I, all, loving all, it. All, the, all I know, Big Cat, is that at 8 o'clock, Hard Knocks was on my television set. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that and was I, You best. know what I said? Suck it, streamers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That's what I said. It was honestly like I, I've been waiting for that moment forever, and I felt bad. Uh, there was a moment where I did, I did stream myself watching Hard Knocks, rubbing it in people's faces. I then remembered that uh, Max is a sponsor of ours, so I had to delete that tweet. Yeah, but I was, I was gonna say. Uh, it was it, like years of being belittled by uh, people younger than me saying, you're crazy for still having cable. Who still has cable? Last night was our night, and we got to see it live while everyone had to sit there refreshing a nap. Do you believe, or do you like? I remember like when Popeyes ran out of that chicken sandwich when it was very hot, Ooh. and a lot of people said that was a conspiracy to even fuel more want for something they couldn't get. Do you believe that they were toying with the hard knock streamers and 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 making it in even more in demand, in demand, on demand? That hey, you're you're looking forward to it now. You can't have it now. You want it even more. And this is going to create more talk about hard knocks. Mm, no. I, I, w- I want to maybe believe that, but as someone who's been on the other end of like, hey, where's the podcast? Release the podcast. Um, it, it, I know that there was someone in HBO last night that was having the worst night of their life because yeah. there's nothing like the world demanding you press the button and the button just can't be pressed. And said person is probably looking for a new job today. Yeah, brutal. That that just I, I've been on that end, and it's a terrible place to be. So, um, but I, as for the episode, I, I I loved it. I thought it was I all my complaints from from the week one episode uh, are gone. They got back to football. They spread the ball around. We got to see a lot of different people. Um, I I thought it was a great episode. Uh, no swearing again for two two straight episodes. Are you bothered by that at all? I didn't even notice because I don't I don't use swear words like you do as a crutch. <laughs> F you. I'm clean living. Yeah. I'm clean living. F you. Yeah. So you don't you don't I, let me ask you this. 
if we weren't such big Bears fans, would we think this is a soft year for yes. for Hard Knocks? Yeah, absolutely. But but that's what I said last week. I think it, I think that's just kind of the nature of Hard Knocks now because it's like. Unless you have Antonio Brown coming in in a hot air balloon with a frozen foot, <laughs> like how are you going to get drama out of something everyone's seen a hundred times now, and we all know what to expect? Yeah, are we going to get the magician in the meeting room? Are we going to get um, uh, the mentalist? Yes, we like we we what we, we no you got you got the ice cream uh, Hall of Fame uh, whatever museum is what you got. That's where what you is get. that by the way? I've never heard. Of, do, is it downtown? Uh, they got the ice cream it, museum. Yeah, we it got is to the bottom downtown. Of that last night. Yeah, I've uh, I've been. I, I'm I'm not ashamed to say that I've been to the ice cream museum three times, and both in New York and Chicago. Wow, uh, wonderful place. Uh, great for kids, and you get a lot of free ice cream. I want to jump into the sprinkle thing too. Do you? Yes, yes. that looks fun. Yeah, yeah. So my kids love it, and uh, yeah, someone was like trying to make a joke on you know at my expense, being like, "Oh, how many times have you been to the ice cream museum?" I was like, three times, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course I have. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, yesterday, how how long did they hold you up at the gate, not let you in, and who did you have to call to be let in? To, no, uh, listen, they let me in. I never thought I'd get in. We were, we were there to, to talk to our friend Ryan Poles, and uh, I, I never I never thought that they would let me in, but they did, and everyone was very nice. Um, I, didn't ha- I didn't see any of ownership, which that might have been a bad scene, or Kevin Warren, but, you know, they, I feel like we're, we're, we're getting to a good spot now. The training set, we got to go down to the training room. All those guys are, are huge fans, great guys. I we saw some scouts. I, I still don't understand why NFL scouts ever listen to pardon my take. Um, and we actually talked to one of our scouts, the Bear Scouts, and he was like, "I like to just turn it on because I can turn my brain off." And I was like, "Well, that's a good answer." So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, fabulous. it was a good time though. It was fun. It was good to see. It was good to see a little practice too. What was what was your hardest hitting question for the Bears general manager? Uh I asked him if we were still friends after I drunk FaceTimed him. And uh, I don't I don't know if we are. We'll see. Mm. Did you really drunk FaceTime him? Yeah, I told you guys that, right? I, I don't think Sylvie. Sylvie was on vacation that day, I think, that you told me and Peggy. Yeah. I, I We were at the beer games for um, in Nashville, and David Bakhtiari was there. And uh, I was like, hey, I, wanna, I want you on the Bears. He's a free agent. And I was like, I, I'll – FaceTime Ryan Poles if you FaceTime Aaron Rodgers and tell him to come on part of my take. And this was after a lot of drinking. Um, he FaceTime Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers picked up, came on part of my take. I FaceTime Ryan Poles, didn't pick up. And then uh, pretty much the worst anxiety of my entire life the next day when I woke up and I realized I did that. <laughs> but he had, no, he had no idea why you were FaceTiming him. Of course, but it's Still, I, I like I Facetime him, didn't pick up, then texted him, being like, "Hey, I'm drunk at the beer game. Sorry, don't pick up." Um, and yeah, I, I, it's just a terrible feeling. You're just you you can't do the Facetime out of nowhere to someone you've never Facetimed with. That's well, like a, exactly. Well, I mean, so, and, and here's why I think I, I I don't know if you guys have ever talked about it, but why I think maybe you've gotten away with it or why no harm, no foul. Cause this Meller's done this to me. Oh, I remember this happened with this happened to Cutler a couple of times with me. When you get a FaceTime from someone you're never expecting to FaceTime. And this has even happened with Waddle with me where I FaceTime Waddle now because my kids want to talk to Waddle and, and right. he won't pick up because he's, he's assuming there's never a chance I would ever FaceTime him. So, like, well, when I would see Cuddy, this was years ago, FaceTiming me, I knew this was a mistake. And I knew right. there was no reason for him to ever FaceTime me. And sure enough, I'd get a text, like, a couple of hours later, sorry, my kid hit my phone and and, and you got FaceTimed. So, like, but, I, I knew. So, he probably thought it was a mistake. Well, no, it, it, but it's also like it's a younger thing, the younger people thing. Uh, like all the people in my office, that's how they converse. They don't text, they FaceTime, which is crazy to me. No way. I don't want to see my face. So Wait. maybe if they made FaceTime so I didn't have to see my face. But like the last thing I want to do is see my face. I live with my face. It stinks. So you're uh, what, what, what age group is this? They FaceTime now when they talk? Anyone, 
anyone 30 or younger, they FaceTime. I can confirm that my daughter. My daughter's doing. My daughter's fourteen. She was making something. But in, that's fourteen is different than like thirty. I but no, but they grow up younger. With it. Yeah, and, and yeah. she's walking around the kitchen making cookies and talking to her friend on Facetime. So he's absolutely yeah. right. It's, hey, it's what they do, and it's scary. Did you get a chance to talk to the Bears quarterback? I don't know. If, in fact, we got a chance to ask or to interview the Bears quarterback, what would you think would be a good first question for him from the two of us? Did, did you like Big Cat? <laughs> <laughs> did you maybe like him? Did you, did you like him? Did you maybe love him? I don't know. Did you like him? Like him? Did you exchange yeah, digits? Right. Yeah, maybe just, just hand him a note being like, like or love, Big Cat, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Are you infatuated uh, with the new Bears quarterback and his I'm, ability I'm, to play the position? I'm beyond love. It's it's scary. I I, I held out. I, the the game on Sunday it was Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Uh, all the days blend together for me. I was trying to be emotionally mature, and 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 put into perspective that it was a preseason game. And I lasted about an hour, which is by far the longest I've ever lasted in my entire life. I'm usually like five minutes tops. And I uh, then just lost it. And I was like, he's the best ever. I love him so much. So well, Yurko, by the way, gave him a B minus C plus. For oh, Yurko's a hater. <laughs> he's just got to get something to talk about. I love Yurko. But he tell him to go back to Pinehurst. <laughs> Uh, don't you don't have to he tell will. him he yeah. will give him a few extra yeah. days off and he'll be there that's for sure he'll, i thought he was great i mean listen the the, the real thing and the, i don't know if you guys had this moment i felt so stupid watching caleb williams go through his progressions look at the whole field make a, a throw on the run make a screen pass with a hand in his face and i felt so stupid thinking back to the fact that I convinced myself Justin Fields and Mitch Trubisky were that. Because they weren't. They never were. You know what I mean? I know that it's, it's one preseason game, but just the way he was composed in the pocket just felt different than what we've had the last two guys around. Maybe you should take our advice every now and again then, because we have been on the record telling you that you should have been more skeptical of both of the guys you mentioned back in the day. Why don't you listen to us? But I, I because I, what, what do you mean? I got to go through the whole process. <laughs> but but I understand. And don't pretend that we didn't do this with Justin last year oh, when we no, tried to tell stop, ourselves. Stop. Yes, stop. we did. No, Sylvie we did. did. Sylvie did and you, I are very much. Did alike you convince yourself we that Justin was the guy? Yes. Last yes. year? Oh, not last year. Yes. No, I knew last year, but year one and two. I th- I thought he had all the measurables that he was like a quarterback that was made in a lab that he was and he then was you watch training he was camp fast last year. he had the arm and then last year I just there was something not computing between the lines smart yeah. guy who when he got on the field it just didn't compute oh he's got but, a lot of intangibles he's a, tangible a good, he's he, got a lot of tangibles but yes but he's also leadership is you know he's a good teammate yeah. he's a hard worker he does a it's just it's a really hard position to play at a high level, and when you see it, you know it, and when you don't see it, you also know it. Right, and I saw it on Saturday. Yes, and again, did. it's preseason game one, but yeah, I'm listen. And, and you got to go through the process. Every fan's got to get there themselves. They got to go through the process of of what they see, what they feel. Um, so no, I'm not going to take your advice. What's okay. fun in that? Yeah, I'm going to love right. with my heart, and then yeah. I'm going to get crushed. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm in love with Caleb Williams. By the way, I said, um, and we've been talking about this all week, last weekend was my favorite sports weekend, I think, in about a year. Oh. Because there was no wow. Cubs game on Sunday. Well, no, no, I know. Now, the, you're, now, remember, I'm coming at it from a local standpoint. You're always g- talking about national stuff. So I'm not talking about, like, Super Bowl, or I'm not talking about um, NFC Championship weekend. 
I'm saying from my fan cheering standpoint. So I got the taste of Caleb Williams. That sounded really creepy. We're going to keep that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I got my first look at the Bears with Caleb Williams as their starting quarterback. (sighs) How's that? Was that better? I know. I think you meant what you said earlier. I really do. Uh, I got, uh, you know, rooting for Team USA and getting to root for Steph Curry on my team. and, And that thrilling win. And then I got the Cubs beating the White Sox. That was a fun yeah. weekend. Yeah, that was. It was a very fun weekend. You're right. I mean, the even rooting for Team USA, like having Steph Curry on your team is a very fun experience. And I was, uh, I like was just screaming on my couch. And it was, you're, you're. I, I'm not going to go as far to say that it was the best sports weekend in the last year because that will just say like reveal that we're the most pathetic people. But you're also not wrong. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. It's just we've been in the wasteland for so long, and that's why the Bears have to bail us out this did year. Did you take the Cubs bait? Did you like you? Did, oh, they, did threw it, they chum the water. Did you take the oh, bait? Oh yeah, yeah. I, okay. I bet him last night. I bet him Monday night. Okay. Uh, you know, I was like Monday night. I was sitting there. I was ready. I had my my hands on my phone when they when they came all the way back. And I was like, this team is, is different. Here, here we go. <laughs> this team is different. Don't make it sound like they're Caleb Williams now. You just said but Caleb's I, different. Now you're saying this I, Cubs team's different. I just want them to, I just want them to be within a game or two in September, and it's just not going to happen. I just don't think they can get – I mean, like, the Guardians are really good. Um, but I, we said this last week. Like, I've just been – every week – I don't think it's going to happen, but I just keep telling myself, like, what if they just rip off a few wins here? What if they rip off five in a row? What if they rip off, you know, they, they go they go seven and one in a stretch, and it's just never going to happen. What what it, Have you thought that if you were even more generous with your participation in the 50-50 raffle, that it makes it more likely that the Cubs would pursue Juan Soto? Doesn't the 50, 50 goes to me, 50 goes to charity. Well, but they could. That means they don't have to give any any of their own money to charity because you're actually sponsoring the charity on your own because you're giving True. them so much money. True. Yeah. I mean, Juan Soto. Wait, did is he a free agent? Yeah. He yes. Is, yeah, right? yeah. 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 I, I. He's he's one of those guys that switched teams so many times in the last like 24 months that I like can't keep track of where he's at. You know, in his contract. He's like, wait, the Yankees must have given him a new deal, and they didn't. Mm, no, so, yeah, he's going to cost five hundred million. Five hundred million. Fine. Great. I, I'm with do you. Do it. Bring back Schwarber too. Yeah. Oh, we wish. We wish. <laughs> but I, I was saying we we were reading the Sportico, um, uh, uh, how much like the Cubs are worth and everything. And five point six billion. Five point six billion. I think Big Cat. I was sitting inside Wrigley yesterday for pumpkins and and green day and like they're making money hand over fist in that joint i know just spend a little of it and it's just like i you know just get yeah get one of those guys and and i i'm not saying that that will solve everything because it obviously won't and if they stink we'll be we'll be critical but at least we'll feel like hey they took a shot and they're and they're playing with the dodgers and the yankees and the mets and the Phillies and like these big market teams that like it just doesn't feel like we're taking those shots. Uh, or what do you think of Harbaugh deciding not to go to Michigan for the to be the honorary captain for their uh, season opener? In our, in well, did, he's probably he's a team guy, he just doesn't want to be yeah. a distraction. He did nothing wrong. He you. said that. I'm with you. If he had to apologize, he would have apologized. But he doesn't have to apologize. Amen to that, brother. Amen. <laughs> it's a, Ohio State fans are just. They'll never let this go, which I, I don't blame them whatsoever. I w- if I were on that side, I would do the same thing. Oh, yeah. But uh, it does feel like, hey, I don't know what you're chasing at this point. Like, Harbaugh won, and, yeah. and he's going to win in the, with the Chargers, too. And so you're going to keep getting mad about something that's just never going to get fixed uh, to your liking. I'm upset because I really wanted. I to wanted see, him to I be wanted there too. to see him victory lap. Well, yes, take a victory lap in the big house. I wanted him to be in the back of a of, of like a convertible car. Oh, it waving, just waving as they yes. drove him around in circles inside the big house, and not just one victory lap, a couple for an hour. <laughs> I know it would have been great. It would have been so great because it would have made people so so upset. Oh yes, it would have been delicious. Yeah. You go. Yeah. You're, you're not taking any of your kids to the game this weekend, are you? 
I was going to, but I got to go to the car. We, we did a Stella Blue uh, coffee golden mug thing where I'm going to the Cubs game on Saturday with some fans. So that, that would oh. be fun. But I would have, otherwise I would have, I, how many, how long is Caleb playing for? Do we know? We don't know. And, and there's, there's some not. fear that they may not play at all the starters. What? Yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> you just fell out of Why? love with Caleb, didn't you? Well, it's not Caleb's fault. Well, if like he wanted to play, he could play. See, there you go. I told you. I he's mean, got veto power. Big, Big Cat's a very emotional guy. Like, I mean, he can fall in and out of love quickly with athletes. Yeah, I, I might have to bump him down a, a spot if he doesn't play. Wait, why would they not play the starters at all? Just we'll save him for week three? <laughs> save him for the Big Chiefs game, yeah. No, well, I think that they were supposed to – Depending on weather tomorrow, they're supposed to have a joint practice of about two and a half hours with the, the Cincinnati Bengals. And the thought was, since Zach Taylor has said he's not going to play his starters on Saturday, that, of course, Matt Eberflus would play follow the leader and not play his guys, his starters, on Saturday as well. And last oh, year, let's dominate them. Yeah, yeah, and last definitely. year when they played, when they practiced against the Colts, albeit twice instead of one, they did not play their starters in that game either in Indianapolis. So the thought would be that maybe you you just practice hard against them, you sit them in this game, and then you play a full half against the Chiefs. Got it. Did you guys see what Jim Irsay gifted us? No. What I did saw he... I saw that letter, and then the the this is the uh, the participation flag. Yeah, he gifted us the the famous banner of the Colts uh, AFC finalist uh, twenty fourteen. The actual banner. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so we're we're pumped. We have that in the office. So th- is what- that is that more valuable to you than a Christmas blanket sent to you by Adam Schefter? Oh, don't bring that up again. D- Listen, you guys are never getting on the list. I know, like I, you're never I, getting on the list. Yeah, I, 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 I forgot about that. It's still you bothering it, you, isn't yeah, it? Well, yeah. I, I, it wasn't until you brought it up again. Yeah. You guys are never getting on the list. Well, I mean, listen, there is a an indefinite list of people that don't give you things for Christmas that you should probably be upset about. Yeah, that's true. Like Adam Schefter is just one of thousands. Yeah. Well, Adam Schefter is going to give me a gift this year, and I'm going to rub it in your guy's face. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's not that blanket. Yeah. Well, it might be a new blanket. Yeah. You were using it for. Yeah. We'll rub right, that listen, in our face. I, what I use my blankets for, none of your business. That's fine, <laughs> but don't rub your blanket in our face after you do that. You're so yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to. Um, <laughs> I got to go. I'm picking up. I'm picking right. up my uh, son and wife from the train station. You're getting. You're giving us. I got to yeah. go. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. I haven't seen, seen my son in five years. This is days. what Harbaugh used to do to us. You guys done with me? Yeah. This has been yeah. great. See yeah. big cat. Yeah, okay, bye. bye. I love you guys. Yeah, All back right, at bye. you. Picking, picking them up at the train. He's That's a, he's, such he's, a lie. No, it's I don't such I a think lie. he is. No, he's picking up fast food from somewhere and he had to go inside <laughs> and he's double parked. That's what he was doing. He's got a pizza coming out the door. <laughs>